Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I'm joined by Gary Walker, who is a behavioral change specialist and is also um, very much focused on sustainability. And we're going to talk about the power of our mind. So welcome, Gary. Thank you, Deborah. Now, Gary and I, you may not know, but we actually share an office together. So we often have very interesting talks about um, various things. And because of Gary's specialty, particularly around change behavior and what that looks like. So why don't you tell a little bit about what change behavior means? Hmm, Thanks, Deborah. Well, at heart, I'm a neuroscience nerd. I love anything to do with the brain and, and thinking. I've got a background in psychology and hypnosis and a bit of counseling. I think of my master's in NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I realized with my love of everything, technology and computers, that if we change a program, we can change its output. Likewise, our brains are wired away. And if we change the way we think about things and change the way we actually tell ourselves stories, we can change our outcomes. Now that change works across a number of areas in our life, whether it be health, whether that be wealth, whether that be relationships, but also applies to business. So maybe we can change the way we think about our business. Maybe we can change the way we think about sustainability. So I've kind of blended them all together. Yeah, it was interesting because when we first spoke and we talked about sustainability, it's like, how does that fit in with what you do? But you're absolutely right. In order to to create sustainability, we actually have to change the way that we behave. Mm -hmm. So it actually has a very logical kind of connection. Okay, so before we get started and finding out, you know, how powerful our mind can be and what we can do to actually use that to create a better business, better life, um, would you like to share with us a couple of things that the listeners can get to know you? So perhaps a professional best, a personal best? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Well, let's start with a professional best. And I think it's just something that just happened fairly recently because I'm trying to get a little bit more into the sustainability consulting space. I've just had a very large New Zealand top 10 organization approach me to go and manage a plenary session on sustainability for them. Mm-hmm. And that's something new, well, not for them, but not necessarily new for me, but it was about them recognizing that I can help facilitate changing thinking in people. So there's a whole group of 30 or so sustainability professional coming into a room for the day. Yep. And their goal is to go and saw through all the myriad of work streams and come up with some good eight to 10 plans that they can then take forward. What happens generally is we always get what we've always focused on. And if we do what we've always done, we get what we've always done. Mm -hmm. So the whole goal is for me to go in there and go and challenge their thinking. So I'm going to go and get them to think of how many red things are in the room whilst they're thinking of the red things, how many green things were in the room. So just change their thinking, just lift their brain from a standard sort of alpha beta wave through to more thinking delta wave, gamma waves. And really, that sounds really weird, but it's all about them thinking outside the square. Um, for example, a nice thing that we're going to be doing, which which is why it's my personal best, is yeah. that one of the things that they're doing, they're in construction. And so I'm going to put a couple of pieces of paper on the table and say, right, off you go and build a house. They don't know that there's a whole Lego set in the corner. I never said to them, only use the pieces of paper. So once they've constructed their house, I say, why don't you even use, use the Lego set? Mm-hmm. God, I hope we're not giving away too many secrets here. Right, we'll find out. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and, and personally, what's sort of been your personal best in your life? Oh, well, this is something different for me. It's because I believe in the power of the mind. I also believe in the power of our mind over our bodies. So as a sideline and a really interesting sideline, I teach hot hit Pilates. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and, uh, Which is that, actually how we met. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. how we met. And uh, what that means is that I have a whole group of I don't know, 30 odd people in a 39 plus degree room, mm-hmm. really hot and working it out. And last night I had one of um, Auckland's top wealth management advisors, one of these people that stay at the top of the PwC tower. And he was in the, in the, the room finished the class and he came up to me and he said, Gary, he said, I don't think you've ever been pushed like that before. He said, you made me believe I can do all these crazy exercises that are done. He says, I'm back. I'm hooked. He says, I've been just so focused on 14, 15 hour days, never giving myself time. He said, you just got me out of my mind. I wasn't thinking of anything. Thank you for this last hour. That was my personal best. That's all I asked for is want people to get out of their minds and just focus on one thing for that time. If it's just surviving the heat, well, it's just surviving the heat. I think that was my first attempt was just getting through it. Yeah, It's tough, it's hard. It is, it is. So um, in terms of the, the the Pilates and things that you do, do you actually use any NLP in that? 
how crazy if I didn't. I right? know. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Tell me how that's. Um, well, I mean, what it, for 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 absolute novices? What does NLP really mean? Because I think it's it's been given a bit of a bad rap at times, as in it can be used to manipulate, but that's not really its kind of purpose. So would you mind explaining how you see NLP and and yeah, how it can mm. be used in a positive way? Well, I guess manipulate is almost the issue that, that sits with it. And I think um, it's the same as the word stress. Stress can be good stress and it can be bad stress. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are about to be run over by a car, we get a bit of stress in our body, our body endorphins kick in and we jump out of the way. That's good stress. We actually have a good part of our body that changes things. Mm -hmm. It helps us lift our game. It helps us do things better. It helps us motivate. So there's good stress and there's bad stress. Likewise, NLP can be used for good and bad. And I guess, I don't know if it's been used too much for the bad part of it. Um, however, neuro, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And yep. so neuro being the power of our brain and how we think and what we, we tell ourselves, our own stories. Mm -hmm. Linguistic is the language we use. And that language is often heard in some people. Say, oh, I'll never get to this. I'm so busy. I'll never lose weight. That's too tough all this language that we use all the time. And what happens is our brain stores it. It actually has the neurons that fire together, they're wired together. And we've got like this pathway that we develop inside the brain that says, we've said this enough times and actually wires it that way. And as much as we set ourselves habits and we set ourselves, this is what I'm gonna do. And we have all the willpower in the world. When our neurons are firing together, tough as anything to break it. Yep. So neuro-linguistic program is a little bit of manipulation. It's about looking at those neurons, rewiring them and manipulating a different kind of outcome. Could you manipulate for people to do um, uh, buy things, market things? Yep, probably. Yep. And I think that we do that anyway. I'm seeing it all through the place, whether they call that NLP or not. It's about positive marking, buy this and your life will be better. Mm -hmm. We used to do that in the 70s and 80s. We used to have cigarette smoking, you know, <laughs> this, do this and doctors will tell you, look great. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, we realize that it can happen and the power of our mind is really strong. So how did you get into it? Like what, what drove you towards learning more about the brain mm. and the mind? Yeah, and the mm. mind. Uh, it, to be fair, I, I did a little bit of hypnosis at school. I'm going back thousands of years when I was at school. <laughs> and I realized how just by doing a small course and getting a person to think differently could change them. And they really did some crazy things under hypnosis. When I was at university, we did a little test, and this was the subject of my thesis. I wanted to understand stress. Mm -hmm. Wired a few people up using some form of heart monitor, doing skin galvanic response. And they said, right. Make yourself That's sweat. You're talking about sweating, sweaty, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. It's cool. <laughs> a big, uh, big uh, loop here. Back to the sweat the other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> day. Um, and I said, right, let's try and increase our heart rate, increase our galvanic response. Let's create stress in the body. And I had 50 or 60 of people do this, and the average increase was five to six percent just by thinking of stressful stuff. We then put people into hypnotic state, and under that hypnotic state, first of all, through a discussion, discover what made them stressed. Seriously, it was weird things. Sometimes it was burglary, sometimes it was traffic. And if I ever ask people what their biggest peeve is, mostly it's traffic, mostly yeah. it's waiting in a queue. It's just silly little things, but it's stuff that stresses people. And so under hypnosis, I'll put them into those circumstances. I'll either put them in the dark alley with the scary people, mm -hmm. or I'll put them in a horrific traffic jam and they're a few hours late for the next appointment. Yep. And every single one of them, their galvanic skin responses flared, their heart rate went up and they completely developed a huge bodily response to something that was entirely in their mind, in their mind yeah. entirely in their mind. And so I realized the power of the mind over our body is so crazy. Yep. More recently, and I'd like to talk this story, they did a study with coffee drinkers. I know you like coffee. I do like you coffee. Yes. Do you have the best coffee here in these offices? <laughs> And they took group A and they took group B and they put them all in the same room. And group A, they showed them their coffee urn on that side. And group B, they showed it on the other side. And they said, guys, we're going to test the effects of caffeine. Group A, you're getting caffeinated coffee. Group B, you're getting decaffeinated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do some, some reaction time testing where they drop like a ruler between your hand and you have to catch it and yeah. a few other sort of tests. And whilst I was going in the background, they had the TV showing the effects of caffeine being heightened, reaction times, faster thinking, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, as it turns out, group A, 
40 to 50 percent increase in all those reaction times really good stuff I said right there we go we proved the power of caffeine no 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 just as a as a part of the experiment both a and b were both subject to decaffeinated coffee. coffee i thought that'd be the case yeah okay <laughs> it was the power of the mind of group a that said right i've got caffeine in me i can do this faster and, and again, it's a placebo proves... effect in, in medicine as well, isn't it? I mean, people actually can, can think themselves better. Correct. Yeah. And so that's effectively what power of the mind is. It's about saying, okay, how can we change our thinking neurolinguistically? How can we change what we say, what we think, reprogram ourselves to do better? So better life, yep. better business. <laughs> <laughs> so talk me through the process you would go through with somebody. Let's just say that I came to you and I said, hey, look, you know, I want to get fitter and healthier. Um, what would you say to me? <laughs> In a nice way, please. Oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I think that generally people wouldn't come to me in that state. Right. What generally happens is people get to a space where they are highly stressed or there's something that has caused them to now make a decision to change. Okay. So it's very important. Okay, for it's Deborah, why now? Mm. now? Why not yesterday? Yep. Why have you left it for so long? What is the case? What is it that's really caused this? And often it'll be some moment or something that has happened in somebody's life that has caused them to reach this moment. A good example would be a weight um, a process. Somebody says, I've got to lose. Why now? Yep. Well, I'm going away in five weeks' time and I need to look like this. Okay, well, that's why now. Yep. We have a moment of stress of, of something that comes into us. So my first process is very simple. Stop. Breathe. Sit back and just go, okay. There's the stress. Is it helping me in any way? Just recognize the drama, recognize the story you're telling yourself and this, this willpower to change it. Just recognize it. Mm -hmm. We then measure it. So the step, second step is just saying, okay, well, where are we? Well, we weight trains. We want to lose five kilos. If we want to get more money in, where are we financially? What sort of rock have we hit? If we have an alcohol problem, how many are we drinking? If we are eating wrong, if we so generally sleep, yeah, um, sleep is one of my biggest challenges. Yeah. yeah, sleep's a big one. We tend to look at things in three buckets: health, wealth, relationships. Sleep would fall under a health thing. Yep. How many hours of sleep are you getting? Are you stressed? Are you thinking? So, what is it that caused you to do this right now? Mm -hmm. Well, I saw your name, yeah, and it came <laughs> up, and I decided to phone you. Well, why haven't you phoned somebody before? Well. I got to work and I fell asleep on my desk. Okay, so now we have the reason. There's a real trigger there. point there. A real trigger point. Yep. So then let's just use sleep as a great example. So first of all, you stop, recognize where you are and own it. Mm -hmm. Often people bury it. Oh, it's because we just had the relationship. We just had the merger. We've done this. It's a new business. We're a bit we, blah, 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 on at the moment. Yeah, all right. those things. Yeah. We justify the crap out of things, to be <laughs> quite fair. Yep. And I think that... That's always the first step is recognize the drama, recognize the story that we tell ourselves. Okay. And recognize that moment. An easy way to do this, and I'm going to explain this in the easiest way possible, is in the traffic. Yep. And this is, you know, understand this. We're driving along, we get to the traffic light, and somebody cuts us and goes into the next lane. And straight away, our blood starts to boil. We are angry. <laughs> we are so, so angry. Yep. And we are the ones that are owning the stress. Mm -hmm. That other person who happens to have had a sick child in the hospital and wants to get there fast enough, he's owned none of that. Yep. Didn't know that he cut you off. He's going to go look after his child. He doesn't own any of the stress. You're the one that owns it because of that bastard that cut me off. Yep. So where's the problem lies? So again, it comes down to recognizing and acknowledging that the problem lies with you and not with the other person, because often we externalize problems externally to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So recognizing it sits with us and so saying, actually, I've got a problem with sleep. Yep. But if we do that, we then start measuring how many hours are you getting? How many would you like? What is going on for it? So we really sit and we actually get very clear on what the problem is. We get clarity mm -hmm. on what we want to have instead. So I said, what do you want instead? Oh, I don't want to not sleep. Well, that's not really clear on where you want to go. And uh, yeah. in a business sense, we'd say it's not measurable either, no, right? So how measurable. do you know when you actually got there? What was the success, success yeah. look like? Yeah. yeah, what is success? In fact, I've had that before. I had somebody come to me and they said, well, I'd like to lose weight. I said, all right, let's stop eating for the next 24 hours and my job is done. <laughs> it's yep. going to happen. Mm -hmm. 
Some people come to me, I want to be wealthier. Here we go, here's five dollars. You've succeeded your goal. So not only does it need to be measurable, it needs to be applicable yep. in those circumstances. So what does that sleep look like for you? What is it that you want? What the outcome? What is the direction we need to go? From there, we get clarity on where we need to go. So we stopped. We've acknowledged what we have. We've decided that we need to change. Yep. We now know where we need to go. The next step is putting into, into place some form of habit or some form of system. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you do the ER systems. It's about putting in good systems in place to track what we need to do. Yep. And, and, and often I see this in NLP. So many times we put in 100 things. Whereas really we should be focusing on two to three things at one time. We don't multitask. We'd love to believe we multitask, but we don't. And but less, less is more, right? Yeah, less is more. And even if we decide there's 20 things that we need to do, we'll just focus on three for the first week. Mm -hmm. It's small wins constantly. There's the goal, small wins constantly. And so we put into place a system that helps you recognize when you're doing those dramas. Yep to sit back from the drama. So if you're in the traffic and you just start to swear at this person, you go, oh, look at me <laughs> owning this. And you change it. You straight away, you start learning to change it. And you might take it off. Hey, I had one circumstance today that I changed my mind. Another drama happens. We tend to use what's called the reticular activating system, which is where most of the problems come from in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the brain which is designed to help us filter and focus on things very quickly. And what that does, and some people might have seen this, you buy yourself a white Toyota Corolla. What do we see on the street? <laughs> yeah. White Toyota Corollas. So the RAS works the same way. It actually filters everything else that you're seeing all the time unless you only see what is in your mind. Mm -hmm. So if you focused on the fact, I'm never getting a job, I'm always gaining weight, I'm never eating the right stuff, relationships, which is the biggest thing, I can't seem to hold a relationship. Guess what you see in your life? You see exactly that. Yep. So we change our habits to look at a couple of positive things and aim ourselves there and always bring ourselves back with a laugh and a giggle, make it fun and change our way that we see things. Yep. Small habits constantly. And to make sure that that sticks, and I think very similar to what you do, we put in accountability. Yep. That accountability could be for yourself. It could be a morning gratitude journal. It could be a spreadsheets i love spreadsheets and then we share spreadsheets with people like hey tick the box when you did this yep get yourself a coach get up there and go so making yourself accountable and set yourself small goals with little celebratory wins allow cheat days just be kind to yourself so those are kind of the processes that i go along and as a coach when people come in i sit down go through that whole process maybe throw in safe hypnosis if they really want to have hypnosis and some people say hypnosis doesn't work guess what they're right it won't work yes <laughs> and and i basically you have to deliver what people think in their own mind will work because that's the way they've always gone remember what we've always done we've always gone yeah it's really interesting i was reading an article the other day i can't remember if it was in hbr or something about being able to program your brain to delete things because your brain actually naturally has to delete things it cannot possibly hold it's all right, the information yeah. that we actually gather every day and so it's the things that we focus on other things it will go well i must need to store this because you keep thinking about it um so how do you actually kind of yeah press that delete button on things that are unimportant as yeah. opposed to things that are important yeah. so yeah. we actually don't delete it they'll always be there but what we do is we rewire right so instead of our neural path going there and saying and a great example here's a great example for weight loss actually yeah uh, my most recent client biggest issue what's your biggest issue oh sweets and ice cream okay that's understandable that's yep. what happens so how does that happen do you go out for ice cream or oh no just uh, like the, the lollies in the in the fridge and in the cupboard okay so when you buy those lollies Oh, in the supermarket. Okay, so here we go. Let's go backwards a little bit. So now we've yep. got a neural path that says go to shops, walk down aisles. Oh, those sweets are on special. Let's buy those. They sit in the cupboard. We go home. Our willpower is no longer strong anymore and we grab into them. Yeah. How about we stop it right at the source? When we're walking down the aisle and we see those exact sweets, we turn around and we go, hmm. We recognize ourselves, we stop. We laugh. We laugh. <laughs> ah, I would have bought those. Yeah. And we walk on. Now, when willpower is at its worst, we tired because often that's what happens. We set up ideas and plans in willpower. Willpower is great. Yeah. But when we're tired, when we're a little bit stressed, when other things are happening, willpower falls outside and we go to easy. We go to easy comfort in some form. Mm -hmm. If those sweets were there, we would grab them. Yeah. If they're not, we say, I'll go and jump in the car, it won't be far. 
Look at me jumping into the car, put the keys down. Even if you wait for five more minutes, give yourself that pause, that space between action. Yep. That's all we're looking for, small habits constantly. Fantastic. So can you give me an example how you might use it in a business sense? So we talked about stress, and I should imagine, because you know all my clients are business owners, they, they can certainly be affected by stress. Mm. How would you use what you do to change that? Mm. So I think it comes down to the way that people are interacting with others in the office. And so first of all, getting ability where you actually stop Yep. and stop doing the stress, stop doing the drama. So getting very clear on where you need to go, yep. focusing very clear on where you go and on your processes to get there. So making sure you can measure where you're going, making sure that you can actually take time out to actually uh, put together systems and processes that help you get to where you need to go. But without diving into the stress, the minute you see yourself stressful, take yourself out for a walk, take those breathings, look for what's positive and where you can change things. I always think at any one stage, if you feel that in business, yeah. refocus on where you've got to go. Often we get so buried on just trying to be busy for busy sake yeah. that we forget to stop. Get outside, stop looking at your phone, just focus. Where do I need to go? Okay. So reconnecting with your your why, your vision, is that what mm-hmm. you're saying? Is having yeah. that giant, we talk about clarity breaks and that's about getting away yeah. from everything for yeah. a couple of hours, blank piece of paper and just allow your mind to not be distracted. Spot on. And yeah. I think the issue nowadays with business with what I see and for example, the, the, the session that I'm facilitating is that everybody's so busy being busy mm. that they don't stop. They don't take that moment aside from it. They don't think outside their square of not using that piece of paper, but using the Lego blocks in the corner. Yep. And that comes through phones and that comes through our, our natural ability to always think, oh, I've got five minutes now. Let me get onto my phone. Yep. We always on, and I'm, I'm not banging on phones. I'm not banging on technology. I'm the biggest techno nerd in the world, <laughs> yes. but we don't give ourselves space. Yeah. And I think sometimes that space is what's important, even in business is to actually recognize where we've got to have some space. My, probably the, the two biggest clients that I've had around a business has often been, as much as we can blame the company, we can blame, we always have to look to ourselves for the responsibility mm-hmm. here. Um, one of my clients fairly recently, great job, good three to four figure income, really, really strong, but very upset with the, the process, not happy with the job. And that's very common to go. Yep. Sitting there going through a lot of the process, realize that you're not actually living to their purpose, to their why. Mm-hmm. So the values of the organization weren't matching their own personal values. And I think that that to me is a very big thing is values alignment. Yep. And when your why matches what the company wise and the company is demonstrating what really means to you, that's when you give it your all. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because often I talk to business owners and we talk about that exact thing, but almost in reverse. So getting the right people into the business to do the right the right roles. I suppose it must be a bit scary. I mean, finding out that you're in an organisation that doesn't um, align with your personal values. I mean, it's easy for a business owner to say, we need to get rid of people because they don't fit our values. But the other way around, waking up one day and suddenly realising that actually your values don't fit in with the values of the organisation. Where do you go with that? Well, I'm going to change the word that you just said there. There's NLP ah. at its best. You see, that's very scary. Yes. So I think that's the point of it. It's actually raking up and going, well, this organization, A, uses a million pieces of plastic. It has n- it's just purely got sustainability greenwash. I, at heart, am doing something by the right things. So that what it is, it's a realization. Hang on. Can I change this organization from within? Can we go and modify the values? If we cannot, mm-hmm. then are we being happy by staying here and actually using that as a learning experience? Now, does it mean that maybe we need to go out there and go and dive into a different role, lose some money? Well, that's the point. Aren't we going to be happy in our lives? Yeah. We always say to ourselves, when I do this, I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Our goal is actually to wake up every day and be happy. Yeah. It's not about later. It's not when we, it's now. Yeah. And I present. think that we need to make that present moment as happy as we can. Mm. Sure, there's going to be financial stress. Sure, there's going to be changes. I moved out of a corporate role. I decided I didn't want to work 40 hours a week. Yep. I decided where I wanted to go. Did I have to change things? Did I have to change some of my expenses? Yep. yep. But I decided to put de-stress and no stress in my life as the forefront of when I wake up in the morning. If something is stressing me, I'll move away from it or try and change the circumstances around that. 
rather than fighting the fight and being unhappy. Our journey is more important than anything else. Yeah. And I think also people might worry that, yes, they're going to take a, a salary cut or not have the same level of income. And maybe for a period of time they may not. But I, I always believe if you're doing what you love, then everything else around you kind of falls into place and you get what you what you need, what yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you focus on what you'd like to have in your life. Yeah. And I think if you do focus on that, and sure, there will be some changes, but that's part of our learning. Otherwise, what we're doing, we, we, we're going to work every single day for 20 years and complaining every single day for 20 years. Well, yeah. who's the one in traffic getting upset there? Okay. And life's too short, right? Because yeah, who knows what might happen. That's so right. how do you, how do, what tools do you use yourself personally? Because we talked about, you know, being in the present moment, having gratitude, keeping focused on your why. What are the sort of tools that you use yourself? Uh, it's interesting. And, and I think that I'm all one for systems. So, for example, I've got my Panda Planner that I use to plan out my day and yep. then I might do some reflection on that. I use an online diary called Agenda that I sit and I just map out my days and I track all my clients and things like that. And that's all technology to help me. Yep. But to be fair, the biggest thing that I use is I recognize my moments. Yep. I recognize when I'm getting in any way stressed, happy, excited, whatever the case may be. Yep. And I go, oh, okay, I smile. And, and I'm trying to be of service constantly. So those are the tools I do. If How can I be of service at this moment? Yep. And I find that as a minute that I stop thinking about me and start thinking about those around me, that's my tool, to be fair. That's yeah. really all it comes down to. Would I lose a couple of things? Yep. And is that okay? Yep, it's actually okay in the big scheme of things. Lots of people are living a very terrible life right now with COVID and with money and with health. Um, I think we can only affect what we can affect around us. And mm. who are we to, to think anything different? So, yeah, I do use a bit of technology, yep. a little bit of spreadsheets. I do use a little bit of accountability tools. I okay. keep a diary, but I'm not consistent on it. I do it when it feels right. I try and plan my week. I always think it's important to know where we're going yep. and try and deliver to what I can on those things. And I think it's about our journey. It's going to go back to that space. Yeah. Meditate occasionally. I'm not the best meditator in the world. <laughs> okay. It's so funny, isn't meditation is one of those things that's always eluded me in terms of I tried so hard, and then look at language, tried so hard to meditate. And I actually realized that it not one size fits all. Meditation is not the way that we often see it, which is people sitting there with cross legs and umming and ahhing or umming or whatever they do. <laughs> and I realized that my meditation is actually about getting out into nature yeah. and without technology. And so therefore I'm just present in that current moment without thinking about anything else and that's that's a form of meditation isn't it absolutely and i yeah. think just stopping and just and i don't want to say hug a tree but stopping <laughs> yeah. next to the trees and just breathing yeah but being in the moment of breathing for that moment smelling the woods you know being outside in nature just being in the present moment that is meditation you can even sit at your desk and actually notice the fabric of the chair of the table yeah uh, you can just for a second let your mind stop being busy it's yep. the power of our mind has over our body will stress our body so likewise we need to change things in our mind we need to just sit and just stop them that's why i said the first session is stop yeah so let's recap those steps so yeah. the first one is stop, stop. so stop. stop yep yep then we we measure where we are are we okay are we happy where are we are we, are we good with where we are we look at our health wealth and relationships are we happy with all those areas yeah we measure that mm -hmm. If any of them are a no, there's something that we need to change. Where do we need to go with this? Is it a relationship we need to change? Is it a job we need to change? Is it health that I need to change? do something differently? Yep. Once we do that, we put in systems in place to change those. Now, where we can go with dieting, where we can go with relationship advice, where we can go with things. I think we innately know what we need to do. Yep. Focus on very few things that we can change every single day. Set yourself many challenges, one or two day, one or two week challenges. Just yeah. focusing there. Hold yourself accountable either directly or with through somebody else. And most importantly, the most important, enjoy your journey. Yeah. You know, stop getting stressed. <laughs> stop the drama. It's interesting because you and I spoke a little while ago about how similar it is to what I do in a business sense. And I really think it is, you know, because we think about the EOS journey that I take people on. It is about, first of all, stopping because it means something's not working. So you need to stop and go, what's going on? Yeah. It's about really clear on that vision, you know, that clarity of where you want to be, looking at what's working, what's not working, breaking thing down, things down to bite-sized chunks. We call them rocks, but just oh, things that yeah. you can, less is more. Um, and then measuring accountability to make sure that you're actually yeah, getting those things done. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, so it's very similar. So yeah. personal life, business life. And I think that's the whole point with better, better, better life, better business. And yeah. I think that those two are completely interchangeable. Mm. And it's about us recognizing our, our part to play. Yeah. yeah, and I think we talk about, you know, work-life balance. And I've always actually said that I'm not sure it's about balance because balance to me makes it feel like the scales have to be absolutely equal. But again, it comes down to the individual. What's really important for you and where does that balance sit with you? It may not be 50-50, mm -hmm. but it's about getting that right and making sure that they work together as mm -hmm. opposed to work against each other. That's my version of balance. I think that's spot on. In fact, I, a great example as probably my most recent client, they were launching a new project and needed to put in 50, 60 hours a week. Yep. And the concept was needed to get this done in order to have the longer girls. So for a while, work-life balance was, I'm going to put in 60 hours a week, but enjoyed the journey. Yep. Because I have a mission. I know when this is going to finish. And in between, I'm going to take my hour. So this is what this wealth guy was doing. He took his hour for his own self. Yeah. And took the time out to make sure that his health, wealth, and relationships. If you wake up and focus on getting your health, wealth, and relationships all sorted, you will be fine. So make sure you feed your spirit, mind, and body all the time, feeding it the right way. Yeah. And then occasionally we will say, actually, I'm only going to work 24 hours this week. Yeah. And get off our phones, get off the stuff that makes us busy. Yeah. When we lie in bed, learn a new process before we go to sleep of actually showing some gratitude for what we've had amazing through the day. Just yeah. sit in your mind and kind of do what you started today off. What's the best thing that happened to me today? Yeah. Bring it to mind, have some smiles, close your eyes, and your brain says, hey, but what about what? No, I'm quite happy where I am. Thank you very what much. About, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I actually think using the word shh is actually a fabulous thing. Okay. If you say you want to learn to meditate, sit down, Deborah. I want to do 20 seconds of meditation. Okay, let's go. Blah, blah, blah. Shh. Blah, mm -hmm. shh. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's fantastic. So the ideal sort of person that you like to work with, obviously you've got individuals, we've also got businesses as well. Just describe me a little bit about the ideal um, client for you that you, because you, you know, you're all about helping. Hmm. What does that look like? Well, I think uh, I call myself a, a change uh, behavior coach and the whole goal being the fact that some people need to change personally, some people need to change at a business level. Yep. And so the ideal client is somebody who's recognized that they'd like to make that change. Uh, I'm, I always think that there's a role between a therapist and a coach. A therapist is somebody who helps somebody off the ground where they are just stuck in yeah. one simple area. And a coach helps a person who's already standing, looking around, not sure where to go, and helps them start moving. A performance coach helps people run. Yeah. So those are the three. I tend to prefer working under performance where people are really wanting to uh, elevate their business to leverage what they're really doing. Somebody sitting with something they want to try and get off the ground. Mm -hmm. That's where I like to work. I like to work with businesses. They want to change their thinking. Yep. So go through a process of creative thinking. So that's ideally it's a small business, something that where people are looking to try and change their thinking mm -hmm. and do a little bit of a neuroscience nerdy kind of space, which I really love. Yep. And I'm also looking for individuals who want to make a change. And I've actually got uh, the desire to do that. I don't like people who don't take any responsibility. And that sounds really silly. No. The first part is taking responsibility. And, oh, I don't want to change. Well, if you don't want to change, you ain't going to change. That's exactly you know? right. I love I've it. had so many smokers <laughs> arrive with me or drinkers that say, "Wow, well, oh, my wife wants me to do this. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'll take your money, but I'm not guaranteeing any results here. Yeah, you you've got to, to want, want to do, to do it yourself. Yeah, I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how do people get in contact with you, Gary, if they'd like to have a chat to you? All right. Well, uh, the easiest one is just going to be through my central website, which is garywalker.cloud. Not cloud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that kind Living of sends, yeah, yeah, that's right. So kind of, it's me in the cloud. Yep. And it sends people through to sustainability work that I do. Yep. It sends people to some of the coaching that I do and some of the speaking that I do. But it's all about service. I'm I'm just looking to try and get out there and help others. That's really my goal in life. That's wonderful. Hey, look, thank you so much. Really appreciate you spending the time with us. That mind is an amazing thing, isn't it? That's wonderful. It's really good power. The mind is, is so strong in both ways, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Deborah. Cheers.